Hello, and welcome to The Gray Area, where I give interviews with developers, talk about gaming news, and give you unique insights into the industry. My name is Genesee Gray, and this is the 108th episode in a show called Wild Wild Star Love. Last episode was an interview about my PAX experience, about Dragon Age 3, Phoenix Fire, Source Developers, StarCraft Ghost, and Battle Black Theater. Today is Monday, June 23rd, and we are going to talk to Development Director for Wildstar at Carbine, Matt Makarski, and he was the Creative Director at the time of the creation of Wildstar. We will have a section for Q&A at the end, so save your questions till then so they don't get lost in the stream. And let's start with News of the Week. Matt, what is your News of the Week? Uh, I think the biggest thing is uh, we're having a big Wildstar launch party at the end of the week. And so we're getting all prepped up for that. And I bought a whole new outfit. That, <laughs> I have seen uh, your shoes, and they look pretty good. Oh, yeah. The shoes were, were tees, but uh, I'm definitely going to be decked out in Wildstar colors. So I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. Um, but I don't want to debut the outfit right now. But uh, <laughs> Is it but, themed? Like, it, do you have a theme, or is it just Wildstar themed? It, it's Wildstar themed. Um mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to give too too much away because nobody on the development team uh, knows what it's going to be. But uh, yeah, we're having a big thing. We're going to have a mechanical bull there. Whoa! Uh, so yeah, hopefully there's no injuries. Yeah, right. Dev team <laughs> taking down the uh, Wild Star mechanical bull. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I mean that that's the biggest thing coming up, and um, and then um, yeah, I've just been playing a lot of the game. I mean, I know it might sound weird to people, but uh, but I spend my nights and weekends just playing playing the game. I'm about level. I think I just hit 25, ah, so okay. I got wood. And this, you know, it's fun to play the game in the live environment because you can't cheat. You actually have to do stuff, you know, like you would. I'm, I've decided what my housing plot is going to be. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the most redneck white trash. Housing plot. I'm an exile, so I got to do that. So, okay. yes, you're rebuilding. Uh, buying a lot of dirty mattresses, and, and I think I'm gonna get a uh, cryo chamber, chamber uh, full of beer and everything. So, <laughs> I've just really been focusing on that. Uh, I know it's not very exciting, but that's pretty much been my life for the past week. So, are you commissioning this art specifically for your house, or is this part of the game? No, this is part. I mean, it's. You could buy. You could get all this different stuff for the game. You can get just, run down mattresses and beer, empty beer kegs, because that would be amazing. Yeah, the, like in the game, like I think if you if you type um, bed or mattress or something like that on your housing plot, you could buy a. You could just buy a dirty mattress. Um, so and I'm only then, level ten, so I don't have these luxuries. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, like you could buy beer bottles, and you could like there, there's hundreds and hundreds of items uh you can't buy them all some of them you have to do challenges to get um mm -hmm. so i might have to go back and do all the challenges that i didn't like get a gold in or didn't get the housing items in but uh yeah, yeah it, it, it's really pretty amazing because everybody in the office is just playing the game like i bought some of the steam uh sales stuff i bought like um battle block feeder actually i bought ah. and, uh, <laughs> um the stanley parable I heard that was really interesting. I've been trying. Um, yeah, and but uh, it, it's funny because everybody's like, "I'm buying all these games," but right now we're all just playing Wildstar. Right now, um, it's kind of a challenge to keep keep up with the other team members to make sure that you're leveling up on time. And you know, people talk trash like, "Oh, I'm level you know 40 or whatever," and I'm like, "I'm only 25." So, but yeah, that's pretty much been my week. Gotcha. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the past. Uh, gaming as a child. Were you a big gamer as a kid? Yeah. I, I mean, I, and, and I know this is going to sound very cliche because it wasn't like I was born to make games. But I think games were always, like, I think, I, by the way, I was born in, like, the mid-70s, so, you know, showing my age. But, um, like, I think my, fir I, my first gaming system was a ColecoVision. I don't know why. Like we, my 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 cousin had an Atari, and I I think Atari might have been too pricey for my family, and we got a ColecoVision. Um, and yeah, I used to play like the Smurfs, and there was like this Pac Man ripoff, and um, like I, I loved it. I thought it was the most amazing thing in the world. And then I had like 
an Apple IIe, and I remember I had two disk drives, and I remember thinking, oh my god, I don't have to take the floppy disk and, and change them, because I actually have a dual disk drive. And uh, yeah, I've, I, since then I've pretty much had every system. Like I, like I had the NES when it came out, I had Super NES, Genesis, Turbo Graphics 16, like I've pretty much been a gamer my whole entire life, um, you know, and I never really thought of it as a career until much, much later in my life. But like looking back, I remember being in the fourth grade and like drawing with marker these platformer shooter levels like Contra and like you know you draw like a little power up icon in the corner and everything and and I never put two and two together but I'm like wow I always it always kind of made sense that I, I don't know it games were born around my generation and it's kind of our my you know the generation of or my generation's medium like film was a few, you know, a hundred years ago, right? Um, but uh, but games really didn't come onto their own until until my generation. I think uh, there's something like I don't know, passionate about that. It's like yeah, it's ours. Like before that, you know, no one really did it. So tell me more about the art. You're saying you're drawing levels. Is that the interest uh, de designing kind of the layout of things, or what sort of art did you do when you were younger? Um. I did, uh, for some reason, I always, like, I don't, I don't know, my mom recognized that I had a passion for art when I was really little, and so I was always proud, like, when I was in kindergarten, when people said, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was like, I want to be an artist, and I thought it was special, because everybody was, like, an astronaut, or a fireman, or a cop, or something like that, right? And I, an artist, no one said artist, so I, I really latched on to that just because I think it was different when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when I got really serious about art was like right before high school. I used to draw a lot, but I got into comic books uh, later in life, like when I was a teenager, and I wanted to be a comic book artist. And I would just sit in my basement and draw all day long. And I, I was like, I'm going to be a comic book guy. Uh, that's what I want to do, and I don't want to go to college and all that stuff. And um, I grew up in the country, in the Midwest, and there wasn't a lot of formal training or a lot of programs that you could you could be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, so it was literally just like copying work out of comic books. And you know, if you choose the wrong artist to to mimic, then you get all their you know bad habits and their lack of anatomy and all that stuff too. Gotcha. Um, so when I when I graduated high school, I tried to break in, and I just have like a stack of rejection letters. Uh, and then I decided to go to art school. But um, you went to Phoenix, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and at the time, I was like, okay, if I'm not going to be a comic book guy, then I want to be a special effects, uh, a CG special effects artist, and because like Jurassic Park and and Terminator Two and mm. all those. And I knew that that was the future. And um, there was only a few schools in the country that taught it. And Art Institute was one of them. And um, that's how I got into that. And then I fell in love with animation and tried to be an animator. Um, and then when I graduated, I got into the television animation industry for a while. And I was a storyboard artist. But all my friends, like, got into games. And all my, because, like, at that time, I think like Tomb Raider and Mario 64 had just come out and games were f finally making that transi transition to 3D, but nobody really was trained up in it. So all these game companies were buying or were picking up anybody who knew 3D, anybody at all. Like compared to now, now I would have never been able to get in. The competition is stiff. People know what they're doing. Um, back then it was like we didn't, our school didn't even know how to teach it really. So like we would just go home and figure stuff out and then that would be the next day's lesson, the stuff that we figured out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of crazy. Floor. Ground floor, Yeah, because yeah. like all these guys, like we used to, you know, have like a LAN party at somebody's apartment and we'd figure out, like I think 3D Studio Max had just come out. It was, it, we were one of the first uh, classes to ever use it. And there weren't any manuals or anything at the time because, like, the manuals weren't printed yet because um, we got advanced copies for education. 
and me and these like four guys, we used to sit around and just figure stuff out. And um, and then we tell the teacher and the instructor, and they'd be like, "Oh my god, we didn't know we could do that." Um, and the funny thing is, like, like, like two of these guys work for Blizzard now. Um, you know, like, like it's pretty amazing the journey that we've all made, and we're all kind of running you know different teams and everything we're all leads and everything and back then it was just like really kind of low rent way of learning how to do 3d wow yeah well you've lo you mentioned blizzard and you've worked for a lot of prestigious stu studios at ncsoft orange county blizzard crystal dynamics how did you get into I guess into the specific art creative you know director the official title from school um, so like I said, I, got, I, I was a storyboard artist, uh, for, for television and, um, and all my friends were in, in the games industry. In fact, like all my, my friends from school got hired at Crystal Dynamics to work on, on Soul Reaver. And, um, I was between jobs and my buddy was like, oh, come, I was up in Portland. They were like, come let, move down here. It'd be great having the crew back together. We'll just hang out. And. They said, you know, if you can't find work, we'll get you a job. And I was like, well, I haven't done 3D for like three years. And they're like, ah, you're a good artist. Don't worry about it. And um, I, I used to get uh, freelance work in the in the television industry, and I would just work at the game studio. I would just go to work with my friend and be in a little corner doing my drawings. And then at night, I'd hang out with the team, and I would, like, go out drinking or, like, we play games like we play like Quake Three or Age of Empires, and um, I really just became friends with everybody. And then, sure enough, like a few months later, a job position popped up for a texture artist, and um, I tested. And I actually slept there, slept at the office all week. It was crazy. Like for my test, I just didn't even go home. I just slept on a beanbag and had a toothbrush. And you can't do this nowadays, but back then, like, no one thought anything of it. Um, and uh, did the test and then got hired. And then, so then I, I kind of, my career started in, like, environment art. I did models and textures uh, for environments. Um, after Crystal Dynamics, I went to Blizzard, and I worked on the original WoW and uh, did a lot of the city stuff, did a lot of the dungeons. And, uh, you know, again, that was a, at the time, it was a smaller team, so we kind of you wear a lot of hats. You know, if you could paint armor, you paint armor. If you could do icons, you do icons. And um, I was there for a little over four years and became a senior artist. And um, then I I went over to Ready at Dawn to work on Daxter because I really needed to change a pace. Like I was just I needed something different. And uh, a bunch of Blizzard guys had started. Um, that studio and they asked me to come over and I was like, sure, you know, something fresh, you know, the PSP is a new system at, at that time. It was like the new hotness, right? Like mm -hmm. everybody wanted to do stuff for that. And it was really fun because it was a small team. We went for, from working, you know, at Blizzard, which is hundreds of people to like a 30 man team. And it felt like going home again, you know, it was like kind of just everybody does a little bit of everything really small team everybody's really buddy buddy um and you know we pretty much made that game in like less than six months and we worked wow. our asses off on it we had, i mean they had they had some of their core tech done and they had their e3 demo done and then wow. we pretty much like revamped everything they had one level done for e3 and then within six months we just built the whole game and it was great i mean it was i've never worked harder in my life but it was fantastic like i that team was so much fun and then um a few of the people i knew from blizzard had started carbine and uh they just called